So if you're like me and you like to watch what others do to kind of gain inspiration and ideas for something that you might like to add to your space, stick around because today we're going through everything. Hey, future Brandon Moore here from More D&D, and I in fact did not cover everything. If you saw that last video, there's a good chance you could be one of the many people here that asked me all about the digital aspect of my table, such as the digital map display, the several monitors that I use, and how I run everything behind the screen. Or you could just be this guy that thought that I lived in my parents' basement. That was rude. Which I think is quite presumptuous just to assume that an older guy in the basement with a whole bunch of D&D stuff back in- did you brush your teeth this morning? Oh, come on, mom, terrible timing! Anyway, so if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and stick around because today I'm gonna cover everything involved in the digital aspect of my setup, including what programs I'm using to run the different screens, what I'm showing on the different screens, how they're all connected, and a little bit more. If you wanna see that first video, you can go ahead and click the tag here, that'll take you right to it, and then come on back when you're done, that way you can see the entire setup that I have here in my D&D room. And other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. Hey, real quick, before we get too far into the video, I did just want to throw a quick disclaimer out. If you're new to D&D and you were searching through videos on maybe what it takes to play D&D, please do not think that you need all of this stuff to play. That is not the case. I started out with just the starter set, and that's really all you need. Of course, there could be some discourse on exactly what need means, but to me, all it takes is one of the two starter sets that they have, a good set of friends, and an open mind. As long as you got that, you're good to go, and then you may spiral out of control like I did, and next thing you know, you're addicted and you've got a whole dungeon to yourself. But you definitely don't need it, and please don't feel overwhelmed by this video. Feel free to watch it, but you absolutely don't need everything here. Okay, so obviously we're gonna start this video off talking about the different components involved in my digital setup, the different electronics that I use. So first we're gonna start off with this 51. Oh, I left that totally free Satchamon Discord up in the more D&D server that's completely free to use that allows everyone to draw random cards every day to try to make the best collection and everyone's on the same playing field. You literally can't even pay for anything inside the bot. But anyway, I didn't mean to leave that up. Sorry about that. But if you want to check it out, that link's in the description below. You can go over to the more D&D server and pull some free cards every single day, trying to make the best collections, trying to make your collection even more valuable, trying to get these little small special collections, including a Lost Minds of Fandelver expansion that I've added to it. So if that interests you, make sure you click the link below and go check that out. Anyway, back to the TV. So I have a 51 inch Pioneer TV here, which I will link down below, but it's actually unavailable. You can't buy it anymore. But the good news is you don't need it. I used that TV specifically because it had an HDMI port and it was the cheapest at the time. You can buy a used one, you can buy a different TV, it doesn't matter as long as it connects to whatever source you're using to display your maps. We'll get into that more in a minute, but for me it was just an HDMI port. Now if you are interested in this entire setup on how I built this display case, good news is I have a video coming up soon where I'm actually going to build a second one and I'm hoping to give it away to someone at a local game store and they don't even know yet. So if you want to know how I built this, you can look forward to that in the near future. So the only thing I use this TV for is to display maps. I don't really use it for anything else. I'm sure there are other reasons you could use it, but I have other monitors for that, which we're going to go talk about now. Okay, so here I have two different monitors that each serves their own purpose. And what you'll notice is when it came to the monitors, much like the TV, I wasn't worried about the specs, but rather the connections that they have and if they could connect to the setup that I have behind the screen. Now the one on the left is just an old hand-me-down Dell monitor that the person didn't want anymore, they said I could have, and it worked perfect because it had an HDMI port which connected right up to my laptop. Now on this monitor, I typically project immersive images that I capture right from inside the maps that I create using an AI map making tool called Dungeon Alchemist. I am not paid to talk about them, but it is an amazing tool. It makes map making so much faster and the quality is so nice. Now if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to tune into my streams on Thursdays because I'm typically streaming myself making maps on there using Dungeon Alchemist and you can learn a thing or two and you can always ask questions if you'd like. Now the monitor on the right is a little bit different and that's because I wanted to incorporate some kind of digital screen into a DM screen, which I did, but that was before I had this monitor. And so it used to be a normal three wall DM screen until I put this here and I took out that left side. But what's inside of here is what's called a portable monitor. 
And what a portable monitor is, it's just a regular monitor, but it doesn't have its own dedicated power supply typically, and it usually doesn't come with a stand, but rather one of those leather cases that lets you sit it up in kind of a triangle shape. I'll put a link in the description down below for a portable monitor. Again, I don't think they sell this one that I have. These are all older monitors, but I'll put one down in the description so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and get an idea of what they look like. Now, the way they're typically powered is through whatever source you're using to project something onto the screen through what's called a lightning USB-C port. Yep. It's me again, back with a regularly scheduled error. Not quite sure why I defaulted to the Apple terminology for their charger, but what you're looking for here is a Thunderbolt USB-C cord, not a Lightning USB-C. Back to the video. Now what I project on this screen is usually improved initiative, which I've talked about before, but it is a great battle initiative tracking system. It's free to use. I'm not being paid to say that. I love this thing. It's great at what it does. And this is the player view that I put on the outside that shows all the players the order of the battle. They can see who's coming up. They can see when the monsters are coming up. And they also get general ideas of what the monster's health looks like without giving them exact HP bar, which I think is amazing because I always forget to tell them what the monster looks like. Now, all three of the monitors here are connected to the two laptops that I have behind the DM screen, and I'm gonna bring you back here to show you exactly how I have them connected, how I have them set up, and how I control everything out here from here. But before we do that, I wanna bring you over to my desktop, which is where all the magic happens, and I'll show you how I transport all the data from there to here. All right, so before I do anything over there in the dungeon, I typically do all my prep work here at my desktop, starting with Dungeon Alchemist. Now that's because I like to make my own maps. If you have your own maps or you download maps from somewhere else, you can usually get free ones for whatever campaign you're running, or you can find some creator out there who's made some immaculate maps to go with whatever setting you're using. That's a great way to go and you can absolutely do so. I just like to make my own, so that's where I get my start. Once I'm done making a map in Dungeon Alchemist, I'll typically get a good top-down view real quick to make sure that my players, when they're looking at it, can understand what exactly it is they're looking at. Now, once this looks good, you can export it as an image file, which is what I typically do. You can also export it as an MP4 or a video file, depending on what BTT you're using, such as Albert Rodeo. You can actually import that as the backdrop and have a live image that's going for your players. Or if you're a Foundry VTT user, you can even export a specific Foundry file that will take note of the lighting and where the walls are and so much more that you can utilize inside of Foundry. Whatever file you choose to export, I will then download it not only to my computer, but I will download it to a D&D specific USB that I have that has all the D&D content I've ever had on it. So that way I have it all in one place, but I also have a backup right on the hard drive of my computer just in case something happens to it. This USB is important because it's gonna help in getting all the data over to our dungeon here. Now, once I have the map saved onto the hard drive, I'm also going to head over to my VTT of choice being Albert Rodeo, which is where I'm going to upload the map for use over on my digital map display. Now, Albert Rodeo is a free program that does have paid versions, which really just allow you to put more maps into the system, but I don't really find that necessary because I think there's plenty of room to have enough maps for at least the next few sessions. So if I need more room, I'll just delete older maps that I'm no longer using. Now, once you hit the landing page on Albert Rodeo, you can go ahead and make an account. And once you do so, you'll be able to generate a room or a tabletop, essentially. Inside of this tabletop is where we're going to upload the map to be able to edit and have ready for whenever the time comes that we need to use it. Now, I'm gonna dive further into the ins and outs of Albert Rodeo when I do a video all about the different programs that I use, such as Albert Rodeo, Dungeon Alchemist, and even Improved Initiative. But for now, I'm just gonna stick to the basics. I'll show you a few tips and tricks that I use, and then we'll go on to the next step before I head over to the dungeon. Now, once you've got the map imported to Albert Rodeo, the first thing you're gonna do is scale it to match the internal grid. Now, it's got a little scaling tool that makes it nice and easy, and once you're finished, you just hit import. Now, once the map's in, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do to it, but what I'm gonna cover right now is what I find to be the most important thing and the reason we use a VTT when we're playing in person anyway, and that's the Fog of War. So they have a little Fog of War tool on the right, which you can select, and from there, you're gonna have a whole bunch of different options on how exactly you wanna mark the areas to be covered by the Fog of War. They have, for instance, square shapes, circle shapes, or the one that I like to use being the polygon shape, which allows you to define those different curves and corners, those natural areas that aren't necessarily man-made square rooms or circular objects. Once you've got your Fog of War all laid out and you've got everything else you wanna mess with, such as adding tokens or adding different area of effects, then you can just exit out of this because it's going to save into your profile. We're gonna sign into our profile over on the laptop, but again, we'll get into that momentarily. We've got one more thing we gotta do before we head over. So we've built our maps, we've got them ready in Albert Rodeo. Now we just need to make sure that our initiative tracker is ready over here on Improved Initiative. 
Now what's cool about Improved Initiative is that it comes with most of the monsters right out of the monster manual, along with a couple different source books. However, you're still gonna need to add your characters or any other NPCs or monsters that aren't necessarily included in those source books, and I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So if we wanna add a new creature, we're gonna head down to the Add New button and we're gonna click that. From there, you can start typing in all the different statistics of that creature, including the name of it, all its different skills and stats, the actions that it has, bonus actions, whether or not it has legendary actions, and so much more. Once you've filled all that in, you can hit the little save icon in the bottom right or the top right, and it's gonna save it right into your browser. Now, a note, this is not saving it to any kind of profile that you have. You do have that option, you just have to be a Patreon over on the Improved Initiative Patreon, which I highly, highly recommend because they absolutely deserve it, but I totally understand if you don't want to or can't do that, and they understand as well, which is why they gave you an option to physically move the data over, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. Now, if you wanna add a character, it's the exact same way. You can click the Add New on the bottom right, fill in all the stats just like you did before, and hit the Save icon. Now, if you wanna take this a step further and pre-build the encounters themselves, you can actually do so by adding in the different monsters and the characters that you know are gonna be involved in that encounter, and then you can save it, so that way you have it ready to pop up as soon as the time's right. I don't typically do that. I'll usually just add characters and monsters on the fly, depending on whatever it is they've gotten themselves into, but some people like to be more prepared than I do. Now, if you've done all this on the device that you're using to project the maps or using at your table, then you actually don't have to do anything else from here and you're ready to go. But if you're like me and you're doing all the work somewhere else and you wanna bring it to the area that you're playing your session at, then you're gonna have to do a little bit more work, which is starting here at the settings tab. You can head over to the account tab and you'll see that the top link says export as a .json file. We're gonna to wanna to click that and export this and save it onto our USB drive. And now if you thought I have more steps for you, well, I don't, because it's as simple as that. We're gonna take it over to the laptop and we'll be able to import it just like we just exported it. All right, so we are finally behind the DM screen, but before I go over the laptop stuff, I'm just gonna show you real quick how I have everything wired together. That way, if you have any questions, hopefully this answers them. But again, if it doesn't, you can always reach out. But let me go ahead and grab the camera real quick so we can do that. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the digital map display. And you'll see I made this hole here so that way any wires coming from the TV could run out without getting crimped. And so underneath I have this power cord and this HDMI cord. That's the only two wires coming out of it and they come out and they go down into this hole here. Then on this monitor, I have the same thing, a power cord and an HDMI cord. Now the HDMI cord actually plugs into this laptop right here. But the reason I have it going down in the hole is just to kind of hide the extra wire underneath without having it all over the table. So this laptop is connected to this monitor through an HDMI. There's a power cord here for the laptop and a power cord here for the monitor that go through the hole. And then there's a power cord for the TV going into the hole and then the HDMI that goes all the way to the other laptop. If we go underneath here, what the, get that out here. So if we go underneath it here, this is where I plug in everything using the, uh, the outlets that I have. And then that blue black HDMI goes all the way down through the hole onto the ground and over to this laptop, which controls the TV. This laptop is also plugged in, but it's plugged in on the floor. It's just over here into a plug back there. Now this right here is that Thunderbolt cable I was talking about. And this laptop happens to have the slot for it, which is why it worked perfect. This Thunderbolt cable just comes out, runs over to my portable monitor and it plugs in on the other side here. I actually have it running up onto the right. And so that's how this powers and controls that second monitor. So now we've got everything set up and we've got all the files we need. I'm gonna start on this laptop here. And the first thing we're gonna do is take that USB drive that we brought over and plug it in. Now, one thing I did forget to cover while I was at the desktop is that's also usually where I create the PowerPoint with all the immersive images that I add. It doesn't really matter where you do that, but I forgot to say it while I was over there, but that would be on here as well. So after we plugged in the USB, I'm gonna pull up that PowerPoint slideshow on here, and that's what I'm gonna use to display all of the images on this monitor. I simply start the presentation, and then it gives me a nice little button on the bottom of the picture that allows me to pick which slide I wanna go to with an image of each one, so that way I can jump back and forth between all the different slides and not have to scroll through them one by one until I get to the next one. So that's how I present all the images, and it's very useful and it's pretty easy. So once I have that PowerPoint all set up, now I'm gonna slide over to my web browser where I have improved initiative pulled up. So here we need to import that JSON file that we exported over on the desktop, and it's almost the exact same process. We're gonna go over to the little gear settings icon. We're gonna slide up to the right on the account tab, and when we click that, instead of hitting export, we're gonna hit import. Once we do so, all the characters that we created over there are now uploaded right onto this laptop, and the best part is it's stored in your browser. So even when you remove the USB, it's fine, you're not gonna lose everything, it's all still gonna be there. 
Now the last step is we have to create the player view that's gonna be displayed on the portable monitor. And I wanna make a note, you should definitely use a different browser completely when you do this. The reason being, I personally use Google Chrome for pretty much everything. But if I were to try and open up a separate tab, even an incognito tab, if I zoom in, which you're gonna to wanna to do on that portable monitor so your players get a good view of what the order is, it's gonna zoom in every tab that you have open on all the monitors and it's gonna mess up all your visuals. So instead, I use Microsoft Edge just specifically for the player view that I put on the other monitor and that way I can zoom in there, no issues, it's not gonna mess anything else up. Now to open that player view, once you've got Microsoft Edge open, we're gonna go back to Google Chrome and go over to the launch player view button on the left side. Once you do so, you'll see the copy URL to clipboard button that you can click and now we'll go back to Microsoft Edge and paste that link right into the browser. Now you have a live player view that's gonna actively change as you change things on the DM side, and it'll allow them to see who's coming up, and as you change the order, you can even have it set to put who's up next at the very top, or you can just have it highlight people as it goes down the row. And one more note before I switch over to the other laptop, most people might not know this, but you can actually hit the F11 button to get rid of all the bars on the top and bottom of your screen, so it will completely full screen your window, and they're not gonna see all the distractions at the top, like your links or anything like that. Some people may find that common knowledge, I didn't know until someone told me. So that's pretty much it for this laptop. I really just use it for those two things and then Googling anything that I need to right away. I don't wanna do much of that on this laptop because I don't wanna take a chance of messing up what's on the TV screen out there, especially with all the minis on it. If I move the map around too much, then it gets all discombobulated and we don't wanna do that. So let's go ahead and go over what I do do with this screen. All right, so just like this laptop, this one serves two purposes as well. The primary purpose, obviously, is to display the maps out on the TV map case, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull up Albert Rodeo in our browser of choice, whatever that may be, but then we're also going to pull up an incognito tab. That matters, and I'll explain why in a moment. Take that incognito tab and slide it over your TV map case and just leave it there for a moment. Now back to Albert Rodeo, we're gonna enter our tabletop just like we did before. And once we see that map, we're gonna go up to the left hand side where we see invite players. Click that button and when we do so, we're gonna have a link now that we can paste over in the incognito window to open up that player view. After we pasted that, a dialog box is gonna pop up asking you to type in a name. It also just gives you a random name. It doesn't matter, you can leave it. And then it has a little button that's gonna have you ask to join. Once you click that button, go back over to the DM side and click the OK button to allow that screen to now join in as a player on your map. Once that happens, your whole TV map case is gonna open up to the map that you have, but the player side of it, so they're not gonna be able to see through any fog of war, they're not gonna see any hidden creatures that you have, or any other DM stuff that you have set up that you're not ready for them to see yet. Now a note, you can also hit F11 on here to get rid of that top and bottom bar, which I do every time, just because it's too much of a distraction. Now the reason we did an incognito tab is because if you opened that up on a regular tab, even pasting the invite players link, it's going to see you as the same DM and just going to show all the DM side of things on that screen. By making it an incognito tab, it's not allowing it to see who's opening the window, so it just assumes you're another player on another device. And that's pretty much it for setting Albert Rodeo up. It's very simple. Now you can control a whole bunch of things on your side and your players are only gonna see what you want them to. And again, I'm gonna cover a lot of that stuff in a whole separate video, so look out for that. But this was just the basics. Now, as I mentioned, there are two things that I use this laptop for. The second thing is playing music. I use an app called Podcast Soundboard, which allows me to just upload any music or sounds that I have right to a literal soundboard on my laptop and press the buttons as I go. I connect that to my receiver via a Bluetooth connection that controls the speakers up in my ceiling. I also sometimes use my phone, which again, I can just connect right through Bluetooth to the receiver and play any kind of sounds that I want to through that, but that's really the last digital aspect of my setup and I wanted to make sure you knew how I did that as well. All right, so hopefully I've covered everything this time in my whole D&D &D setup, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them down below in the comment section. I do read every one of them, and who knows, it may lead to a part three of this saga of me explaining everything I've done to this D&D &D setup. Oh God. As I mentioned before, don't forget to check out that Discord. It is completely free. There's literally nothing you can pay for, but we're all having fun pulling Sachimon cards and trying to be the one who has the best collection or even just the best card of the day. I also have my Patreon link down below where you can go download a bunch of free stuff like maps and 3D models. And then I have some other stuff that I put up for my fellow adventurers like Heroes Haven material or even a physical Sachimon spreadsheet that you can use when you play in person. But that's it. That's all I have for you today. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video and I love all the support that I'm getting. It makes making these videos and making this content so easy and I'm having such a blast doing it. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.